So, the Pele Yoetz now is telling a story about this joker that used to make the idiots laugh a lot. Vahi ayom, kasher karav kitso, he was dying. Vahaya shchiv mera, he has few hours to live, that's it. He's in the last day of his life. Umit alef, he keeps fainting. He's very weak, he's fainting. Vahi bechatsi alayla, at midnight, Patach et enav, open up his eyes in a very shocking way. Kebrakim, like thunders, like lightning. Ve'amad, ve'itchil itzok mara. Started to scream, terrified. Terrifying screams. Oi, oi, oi. And everyone around got scared to death. Froze from fear. And he started to tell them, I see black demons. I see terrible angels. They are coming with chains of fire to torture me. I see what's waiting for me in hell. It's horrible. For all the dirty jokes that I've been saying. And he used to scream for mercy. And everyone was frozen. No one dared to move. That's been going on. Until he died, till he fell and died. Everyone in the city that heard about that from the people that were there in the room, they all got shocked. They knew that he actually, before he died, he screamed that what's waiting for him is also waiting for his listeners. So everyone in town who used to admire this comedian, they got panic now. Wow, if that was his end, What's waiting for us? Some people that were there in the room said that he started to say names of people that are next in the list. That they are next. What's happening to him now is going to happen to them. For all the people that heard and did not protest, they are all guilty. How many days he was screaming before he died? Three days and three nights. 72 hours. Panicking, screams, like, wow. From such fear. Until his neshama came out. And everyone in that city made a, an extreme tshuva, repentance, from fear. Something that happened in his days. One more thing that connects to Nivlut Apeh, it's the Goish songs. The songs of the Goim. The songs of the Goim, you can divide it to three categories. One, classical music. Mozart, Beethoven, beautiful music that has no words. Nobody cares. That's one section. Then you have words, then you have songs of Goim that have words, but don't have curse words. They're speaking about something that happened, a story, you know. A word that happened, you know, all kinds of things. And then the third category are the songs that have curse words and all kinds of not modest words. Not necessarily cares, but things that brings the mind of people to think about not modest scenarios. That's called Shirei Agavim. Shirei Agavim, that it's totally forbidden. So, obviously, immediately you understand that rap music and hip hop, it's a crime to listen to, because every other word there is a curse. And the people that make these words are the lowest level people, the lowest. Because just see what comes out of their mouth. You see who they are. You can compare Mozart to some gang member that makes a song and cares every other word. I mean, there's two, two different kind of goyim. One has a class, and the other one behaves like, a, like an animal. In everything in his life, not just in his music. So today, unfortunately, 
There are a lot of Jewish singers who are actually influenced by this dirty music. And they try to imitate them by making all kinds of songs in Hebrew, secular songs, which is just as bad. What about religious singers who take that beat and make words of holiness? <coughs> about Hashem, verses from the Torah, words of Chazal. So obviously with the words, there's no problem. Words are fine. But the style of the music is very, very low. Very, very low. I, as soon as I hear it, I want to vomit. Just the beat, even without words. Just that they're going to hear the, 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 the sound of this, this tune. I, myself, want to vomit when I hear it. I just cannot stand it. Cannot hear it five seconds even. Why? My neshama suffer. Can't hear it. If someone will play classical music, I don't suffer. But when I hear this, I suffer very much. However, according to Kabbalah, every melody that was written by a person that is wicked, once he made it, he put his wicked influence into the music. And music is spiritual food. Music affects the soul. Positively or negatively? How do we know? First, you all understand that when a person is very happy and you play a very sad melody, immediately it takes away his mood, right? Someone is very hyper and happy and you're going to play Schindler List music. A minute later, you're going to sit quiet in a corner, half crying. Why? Because the music made him upset. Or the other way around. Person is not in the mood, he's very upset, he had a rough day. You put up the music. Oh, the shama, da, 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 da. Oh, two minutes later, he got up and started to dance. The music has a direct and immediate impact on the soul of a person and his feelings. But you know, in Judaism already, you know by now that we don't give proofs from reality. We give proofs first from what's written. Reality is only backing it up. But that's not the source. Make no mistake. We do not move an inch from what's written in God's book. Whether we see it, whether we don't see it, whether we see the opposites of what's written, the book is always right. And if we do not hold the, way, the same way like the book say, the mistake is always by us. How do we know music is lifting the spirit of a person, it's written in a book of Samuel, okay? Prophet Samuel. King Saul, is a righteous king, was upset, said, every time his spirit was down, what did he used to do? Call David, the musician, King David, which will inherit his place later on, to come play for him. The music that David was playing for King Shaul, Saul, affected his mood. So you see, the music is a remedy to the soul, if it's kosher. Serach Batasher. Serach there's many examples. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying there's many examples, not only that. Yaakov blessed her, she should go into the, into, she never died. She said, Right. So the point is, Rabotai, that the music the music can change the way you feel, meaning it's something spiritual. Feelings, it's a reflection of what, what's going into your mind mentally and into your heart spiritually. This is how it reflects in the way you behave. So now, according to Kabbalah, if idol worshippers or Christians or Buddhists or murderers or pedophiles, or gays, all the people that God hates. We conclude it in one sentence. The people that are in the negative side of Hashem, the music that they write make damage to your soul when you listen to it. What happens if someone else play it? Today when you have Mozart, is the Philharmonic of Israel playing it. He's not here to play, or Beethoven, or any of those. 
So let's say some of these musicians used to be Christians, idol worshippers, going to church, believing in JC. But today it could be Perlman, a Jew, the violin. He will play it. I don't know if he's religious or not. Doesn't look religious, but maybe he is. Assuming he's religious, if he's going to play it now with his violin, it makes the music kosher or not? Does it go by who play or who composed the music? I mean, who invented the music? Because remember, to invent music, it's like a little prophecy. All of a sudden, he has a song that will shock the whole world. Today, you don't need anything special. Any garbage shock the world. <laughs> the more garbage it is, the more it sells, because it shows the level of the people. Right? It shows. What, uh, how many people in the world today listen, from the young generation, listen to classical as, as opposed to rap music? Go ask all Americans. Black, white, uh, oriental, anyone you want. They grew up in America. What would you prefer? Jumping, all these curse words, or nice classical music? For every thousand I would want the jumpy music, maybe you'll have one normal, one's classical music. And it's some nerd. Some nerd that is not interested in anything besides intellectual things, right? That's the way it is. Why? The level of the people is not what it used to be. Back in the time, you know, you would see right away the, the preferences of the people. So according to the Kabbalah, it's, a, it's very bad. Listening to any music that someone not kosher made up, Jew or non-Jew, not kosher person, a sinner, an idol worshiper, etc., it's not good for the soul. According to Halacha, putting Kabbalah on hold, sticking to Halacha, it's allowed to listen to music that you don't understand the words. Maybe the words are not kosher. Why do I care? I don't understand Spanish. Someone gave you a Spanish song. You enjoy the music. If Spanish will get into your car right now and hear the words, religious Spanish, oy vey, shut it off. It's toiva, it's abomination. Thank you for telling me. I didn't know, you know. Why? Because since I don't understand the words, it doesn't make any bad impact on me. Someone doesn't understand the words immediately begin to think about negative things. Someone who doesn't understand the words, he doesn't care about the words. He only listens to the music. According to the Kabbalah, that's also not allowed. According to Halacha, if you don't understand the words, it's allowed. According to Halacha, you can take a song of a very bad guy, get rid of the words in his language, and put Jewish, so Jewish words into the song. For instance, a lot of the Arabic music was converted to davening music by the Sfaradim. You come to synagogue, the tunes of the Chazan, many of them are taken from very famous Arab singers, such as Farid al-Atrash in Egypt, Abdelwab, Um Kultum, that's very famous Arab singers that have hundreds of millions of fans. 50, 60, 70, 80 years ago. Not from now. It's classical Arabic music. They took the Arabic words, and the tunes are very nice. And now you come to a synagogue in Jerusalem, or in, uh, in Brooklyn, right here, in Ocean Parkway, you're going to hear the Arab melodies with holy Jewish words from the Torah, from the Tefillah. I assume by Ashkenazim is the same thing. Yeah. Hungarians, they took Goish music and put words of holiness in them. Is it allowed? Absolutely yes. If it wouldn't be allowed, they wouldn't put it in a synagogue. <laughs> One person asked, why is it allowed? Why is it allowed? The answer is, where the Arabs took all their music from? The instruments that they use, all these things in the orchestra, where they took it from? From Bet Amikdash. The whole world knew that the Jews have an orchestra in Bet Amikdash, the Levites, the Leviim. The Leviim, they used to sing music that used to go to miles and miles away and take the heart of the people out. The soul of the, of the person comes out from the amazing spirituality of this music in Bet Amikdash. The voices that they had, the way they used to play, and just make a person feel in a very, very high mode.